Welcome to Online Offscript, where we discuss trending topics and all things new on the internet. I'm Mira McNitt, the Social Media Director. And I'm Juan Pablo Madrid, Senior Director of Design Innovation. In this episode, we discuss the importance of marketing toward the Hispanic demographic. Our guest was Ernesto Posadas, Strategic Partnership Manager at Grubhub. Ernesto joined Grubhub in 2022 after working as a National Account Executive at Waiter, Bite Squad, and Delivery Dudes, as well as a Sales Executive at Copa Airlines for five years. And with that, cue the interview. Hey, Ernesto, how are you doing? Hey, JP, doing well. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. Uh, let's just jump right through it. So uh, you work a lot um, in targeting uh, people of the Hispanic population in advertising. So uh, do you think creating marketing campaigns targeting the Hispanic demographic is important? Obviously you do, but tell us a bit <laughs> about that. Well, so like um, in order to like, right, I'm like first generation, like Latin, right? So uh, my mom's from Honduras, my dad's from Guatemala. So I want to, I want to make sure that Latinos have a voice and like uh, a space, you know, within uh, the American culture and the American demographic. And I think a big part that is like misunderstood is, is kind of like our spending capacity, right? Our spending power. Um, and I think, uh, if you're a company, no matter how small or how large, you know, I worked for a local State Farm insurance agent and crushed it. I was number one in sales for two and a half years that I was there straight out of college um, because I was li literally linking it directly to the Latino community. So uh, it really is, you know, everybody from State Farm, corporate, Walmart, Home Depot, corporate to you know, mon pa restaurants in down the neighborhood should be marketing to the Latino demographic in some way, shape or form. Um, and I think you see that more and more, even with the people that they choose on TV ads, right? So like if you're watching the Super Bowl or you're watching basketball playoffs or whatever, like you're now noticing that like the people that are actually like in the in the in the commercial, like the actors, they're now like multi-ethnic, they're Latino, they're, you know, they have a mixture of like African-American with Latino, like it can be used, like it can be interpreted in any kind of way. It used to be, and even up until like, I want to say like what five years ago, um, where everybody was like beautiful and blonde and white, you know, I'm not beautiful, right? I mean, that's wrong terminology, but like that was what every ad was, you know, everybody was blonde and white and blue eyed, even, even the Latin American companies, even the Copa Airlines, who I, who I worked for, you know, in the past five years, who's Panamanian based, uh, all of their ads were like these like blonde, you know, white complected, um, people, actors. And I'm like, yo, your like demographic is brown you know uh so i thought that was super interesting how it's it's, it's literally changed i um, sorry if i went off on a tangent there jp <laughs> no i think that's um really what i've experienced also as a hispanic and uh in the marketing work we do uh and in the trends we see uh, i think i was reading that um there's more latinos in the u.s now than there are in Latin America, or it's something like that. Don't quote me on it. I, I saw TikTok yesterday. Um, but it is an exponent, like the, the number of Latinos in the United States has grown exponentially. So you're not targeting them. You're not um, really doing your job. Yeah, so I mean, I, I even like went as far, you know, I got all nervous and I was like, oh man, I got to like sound smart. And, you know, you got to look at the data, you know, eventually like, you know, us, us Latinos are really passionate, like, you know, we matter and everything. But like, I looked up the data and the data literally shows, you know, 60, almost 61 million Hispanics in the U.S., which is a bunch. And then the forecast for 2015 is 2050 of the Hispanic population is going to be 100 million people, 100 million Hispanics in the U.S. And then our forecasted buying power in 2020, which was two years ago, was $1.72 trillion. Um, and I'm sure that's just grown uh, in the past two years. So like $1.7 trillion and you're just deciding not to market to that demographic, you're, uh, I don't know. So, out. yeah, so 
obviously like for bigger companies, like it's really easy for them to like reach out to that demographic. But for smaller and like medium sized businesses, you know, they might not have a ton of resources at their disposal beyond like Google Translate, which definitely know that Google Translate does not do a good job. So how can SMBs like speak to Spanish speaking populations in their marketing? I think the easiest way, uh, especially to target to the Latino community is, and look, I'm not an expert. I'm in sales more than anything, um, is actually hiring, you know, uh, Latino or Latino uh, generational uh, workers to your firm. You know, you, you put a Latino in your firm, obviously, you know, when you have an event, they're going to invite their whole family. And that's like, you know, at least <laughs> at least 32 <laughs> people. <laughs> It's a joke, but you know, I mean, it, it's just like that inclusion or like, you know, I mean, there were so many people that came to me when I was at State Farm that otherwise in their head thought that State Farm's for like, you know, the the richer people or like, or the, or the more established Americans. Um, and then when they, they found out and I was there opening the opening, I mean, the door with welcome arms, they're like, oh my God, this is great. Um, I think SMBs just doing a conscious effort to target the Latino community, joining your local Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, which literally has events. I'm on the board here of the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce of Louisiana. Uh, we have an event at least every month, and it's literally all SMBs. Um, and it's not just Latino firms, right? It's not just Latino clients. It's all the different clients. And even those small Latino SMBs that are just starting off, through joining larger chambers, they have opportunity to gain those um, connections, to get bigger contracts, to work for, you know, we have a couple of places that uh, ha have gotten contracts with the New Orleans uh, Convention Center for like maintenance and cleaning just by, you know, those backward and forward linkages. So just like extending your hand out and saying, hey, look, welcome, come to my place is, is the first step. Um, maybe like a hiring of somebody uh, of the Latino demographic would be uh, also good. And just having a menu maybe that you can offer in Spanish would be something that wouldn't be too difficult. Um, and then if you want to go the extra step, you know, you look at somebody like like your, your firm, Online Optimism, and do a conscious effort to reach this demographic and look at your return. And, uh, and I guarantee you that your return over time will um, not only – pay you back exponentially, but I mean, start to grow. And you know, um, one of the things that I see in marketing, especially in the United States where the uh, Hispanic population is from so many different countries and cultures, um, there are certain difficulties in communicating to everyone and getting them to, you know, un understand or speaking to them as they are used to being spoken to. Uh, so, in your experience, how do you navigate that? You know, we have many different words for a straw. And how do you, uh, that how really, do you go for that? That's actually a funny one. If you don't want to say a straw to somebody in uh, Colombia or in Panama, the same way you call a straw in Central America, like the way Hondureños and Guatemaltecos call a straw is a completely different term yes. than the Panamanians do. Uh, anyway, to, to that question, JP, before we like dive into it, where are you from? Where is your family I'm from? I'm from Guatemala. 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 Ah, so. And Miara? Miara? Mira. Mira. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> uh, I'm from Where's here. Where's your family from? Here. Okay. New Orleans. Cool, cool. Like Louisiana? <laughs> yeah. Like New Orleans. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, JP, my dad's Guatemalan and my mom's from Durin, and like they're right next to each other and they're tiny. And the amount of like cultural differences is insane, right? So um, literally when I go to like my Guatemalan family and we go eat at Pollo Campero, which is like their fried chicken spot, my aunts are like, do not, yeah. don't you dare eat that fried chicken with a fork and a knife. And I'm like, well, what are you supposed to eat fried <laughs> chicken with? I, mean, I was like, I was like, my hands, like they're like, you better eat it with a fork and a knife. I'm like, okay. But I think, look, I like to think of it this way and, 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 New Orleans is very Central American, and Central American, the Central American nations are um, different, but they're we're more similar than we are different, right? But then you're looking, you start looking at los Argentinos, you start looking at los Chilenos, uh, los Colombianos, uh, even the Panamanians are a little like different. 
um, Mexicans, you know, are very different, but Mexicans at least have the dominant um, kind of like media that we watch. So like if we watch Telemundo or we watch Univision, it's all Mexican, like almost Mexican based. I want to say that once Latinos get here, um, we are pretty good about uh, uniting as, as Latinos, right? I want to say, look, we have differences, but I don't feel bad if I go to a Colombian festival, like, like I'm going to celebrate it too, you know? Um, so I want to say in that regard, like speaking in different, I mean, you want to use like the Castellano term. You're not going to use more slang unless you want to get to a certain demographic. Um, and I think the Mexicans are pretty good about that when, when they advertise on Univision or Telemundo, they use kind of like the mainstream term of things. Um, so I, I, I want to say like the Latinos in, in the community, like, yeah, we have a lot of different countries, a lot of differences in culture and whatnot. But I do want to say that <laughs> I would like to think that, that the communication is appreciated in one way, one way or the other. Um, and we would overlook any kind of like mistake kind of deal. Right. So like, if you say, you walk up to me and say like, Hola, blah, blah, blah. Like, I'm going to be like, go back to your country, speak, speak to me in a better accent kind of deal. We're going to be like, oh, cool. He's trying. He actually cares kind of deal. Right. Um, I, th- I want to say Latin- that's the difference between how um, foreigners are treated in Latin America versus how foreigners are treated here per se. Right. I'm born and raised American. Right. I love America. It's land of the free country. You know, we have a uh, opportunity, but you know, when somebody speaks to us in an accent, we like look down upon them, but at least are trying. Whereas in Latin America, if, somebody comes up to us and, and, and starts speaking Spanish, even though that's not their first language, they're at least trying, you know, they're, they're giving it a, a shot and attempt and we want to embrace that and welcome them into our culture, you know? Uh, sorry if I went on another tangent. <laughs> so to summarize, basically your point is that like, if businesses want to put the effort in, they'll be appreciated and recognized by the Hispanic communities, regardless yeah. of if they like get it perfect or not. Right. Uh, I'd like to believe that. I mean, I would recognize that and say, man, thank you. You know, um, you gave it a fair shot. Now, if they like, you know, just Google translated something, at least they tried. But like, hey, I would be the first one to say like, hey, if your menu is wrong, be like, hey, you might want to correct this. this yeah. Work, yeah. Right? Oh, know? no. We definitely just, just, uh, just we definitely have like a no Google Translate policy at the office and uh, ask the <laughs> people who actually know how to speak our various languages that we're translating to to revise. Yeah. Yeah. I will also add to Ernesto's point about um, the trying aspect in like communicating to, um, to folks and trying to bring them into your brand and your story is that I, I think um, once you take your shot and um, try with the Latino community, they are very loyal to your brand. I think the Democratic Party got in trouble for saying that in 2016, but it is very true. Latinos are very um, loyal to their brands. And I mean, if not, look, go to any, uh, look in their in their pantries and you'll see a bunch of Goya, even though Goya hasn't even been that great to the community, but people are loyal. Yeah, are- you're right. You're right. Are there any I other brands? To Goya, but I- I love my adobo. <laughs> and every, other people make adobo. I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's so many brands that like, um, you know, Fabuloso. Like, I don't even, I think Fabuloso, I think they just named it that. It's not even a Latin American. Like, they just, it's like Johnson & Johnson or whoever. Like, they just named it Fabuloso. And like, it's just become like a staple in like a Latin American restaurants for sure and households. You know, it's interesting. JP, do you have any? Yeah, for for sure. Uh, brands. Um, uh, let me think. I mean, I definitely Fabuloso. Even though, like, I started like, I don't know. Like, there's so m- much more options in the U.S. as to like um, for like household cleaners, but I feel like there's still a draw there. Um, <laughs> and then like hot sauces, like you know, I feel like uh, everyone has their their own thing, but um, I think Fabulous is definitely a good example of that. Love it. All right. Well, cool. JP, is this next question for you? Did you ask it or did you? 
Um, I, so I sort of, the bilingual one, I'm sorry, I messed up. This is how the podcast goes sometimes, but this one, I basically just. Okay. I wasn't sure if you like skirted around it. Okay. Um, oh, okay. So let's circle back. So you mentioned how like the projected outcomes for like the amount of the United States population that's going to be Hispanic or Latino or, um, you know, like the buying power. So if brands today are choosing, you know, like, nope, let's let's not reach out to them specifically. Like, what do you think that's going to happen down the line? Like, what are the potential outcomes of that? Look, I mean, I think every immigrant population assimilates, um, right? So the Italians assimilated, the Irish assimilated, Germans assimilated. assimilated. Um, there's still, like, small intricacies that a, a culture tries to maintain. And I think the Latino, com- like, culture is, like, very strong. And the fact that we we all share the same continent is one of those things that, like, is very, it's, like, very relevant to kind of that cultural difference. Um, but I, I did, I was reading earlier to prepare for this. It's, like, in 2060, 25% of the population in the U.S. is going to be in a Hispanic or Latino descendants. Um, what's going to happen to a company if they're not advertising to them? Uh, I don't know if they're, I can't say they're going to go defunct or anything, but I can tell you that they're just miss. I, I can tell you that they're just missing out on sales. They're missing out on, 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 on revenue that otherwise they could be, um, you know, they could be a game changer for them. You know, um, I, I literally read earlier, um today that tesla had come to a deal with uh the uh, state of nuevo leon which is a very like business forward uh bordering uh state uh in mexico um that they had created an express lane so um so that they could just ship teslas down to, to to mexico um that's just an example right so like an example of like the capacity and the buying power of Latin America um, and how directly correlated that is to, to the U S and to U S markets. It's, it's, it's very intriguing. I mean, I remember when I worked at state farm and this is 2012 guys, I'm, I'm, I'm old. Um, so 2012, I remember watching like, that was the, like the Mexico U S soccer game. And it was in Estadio Azteca, which is the Mexicans, Mexico city, Mexico DF famous soccer stadium. It's like they're, it's like the their Mexican church. Superdome. Yeah, literally, it's their church for soccer, right? And the you, I don't know if you ever watch, like, if you watch sports or specifically soccer around the stadium, the, the the soccer field, they have the little banners with advertisement of whoever's advertisement. And if you're watching like the UEFA uh, European Soccer League, usually it's like Qatar Airways or uh, Air Emirates or something, you know, try to advertise. But I remember specifically seeing State Farm advertised there and i was like state farm do they and i was working there i was like do they write insurance in mexico and i went back i went to like work the next day and i was like hey do you do, do we write insurance in mexico and they said no and i remember being like jesus there were so many latinos watching that game in the u.s that state farm invested millions of dollars to advertise in mexico city in a stadium where they don't write insurance because of the amount of viewership that they had in the U S right. So like, to me, that was just like, Oh, whoa, like a, a click clicking moment. Right. Um, you look at home Depot, you look at Walmart, you know, Lowe's, all of them advertise heavily to the Latino population. Um, so, and look, I don't even watch Latin TV. I watch Latin TV when I go to like my, my parents' house, you know, like my dad has soccer on or something or, you know, I, they have Dish Latino. So I, we go over there and, you know, they're watching something in Spanish. So that's when I get like my Latin TV time. Uh, other than that, I'm, you know, I'm not watching too much TV per se. Get your dose of Caso Cerrado. Caso Cerrado. <laughs> yeah. Oh it's my God. Judge Judy. <laughs> that, <laughs> that lady. Well, so when I was with uh, Copa, she was like one of the guests at uh, the Gretna Fest. This is like two or three years ago. Uh they like paid her, I don't know how much money to be one of the guests at the Hispanic sector of the Gretna Fest. And this is Ernesto Schweikert and uh, Todd Akam over at Telemundo 42. They like planned the whole Latin side of Gretna Fest. And so I was very involved. We sponsored it with Copa Airlines. And they brought in uh, La Tora, ¿cómo se llama? La Tora. 
Uh, I her uh, name just slipped my mind. Yeah, Colombo, Colombo, something like that. But she's hilarious. Yeah. She literally is the Judge Judy of Latin America, and people are going crazy. <laughs> and I was just like, I'm laughing. I was just like, I, I don't get the whole like celebrity thing, you know. It's just, to me, it's you know. Just, you know, I I ha- that inspires a question of like if someone is trying to make their marketing more authentic towards Hispanic and Latino populations, like where would they go to find knowledge like that? Like obviously hiring someone who that is just part of their life would bring that information in. But like suppose it's a small business where it's just like a mom and pop two person team or something like that. Like what could they do to educate themselves on the cultures to like make their marketing more authentic? That's really that's a that's a tough question. That's rough. I, I would start grassrootsy. I would start with my community. I would find out what kind of uh, Latino organizations are involved or are um, in your in your local community. Like I said, the chambers of commerce are always a good start. Um, there's always church. There's always a Latin church around. <laughs> it's either like you know a Christian church or a Catholic church or something. Um, and I think just you know researching where you can get involved with your community is, is the first step. Latinos are very like New Orleanians. Like we're very like mind poppy, like shake my hand or like, who's, who, where, where should I go for this? Or who do you know that does that? Um, we're not really like going to Google something like my parents, like, I'm like, mom, just Google it. She's like, well, can you just, can you just tell me, can you just tell, like send it to me? I'm like, yeah, mom, here you go. <laughs> Yeah, I feel especially in the digital age, I think Latinos are more about their Facebook groups or WhatsApp groups, and that's where they get a lot of their information. Very true. Uh, unfortunately, it leads to a lot of uh, chain messages that I'm sure uh, <laughs> you might get as well. Um, but it's a very um, tight community, and there's a lot of sort of knowledge sharing. Um, I personally know that in Guatemala, my mom, my aunt, um, they're on this Facebook group and they're all asking questions. You could alternatively ask Google, like, where do you get this? Where do you get that? But rather than Google it, they'll ask there. Yeah. It's, it's wild to me. I also, mean, I, I even business is so driven through WhatsApp. Um, I like for Mother's Day, my sister and I were trying to send some flowers to my mom first time i've ever done a purchase through whatsapp it was insane but that's really that's, cool uh i think the us is slightly behind in 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 that sense where a lot a lot of these purchases are happening through there wait so you actually like use it like apple pay almost like you could purchase it through like i i spoke with a like person i mean it was a business they had like a business profile and Spoke to them. They sent me a catalog, uh, then sent me like a payment link, and I did it through there. And I was like, I might as well have gotten scammed, but I don't feel scammed. <laughs> and sure enough, next day, first thing in the morning, they were delivered. It was That's amazing. Truly crazy. Yeah. It, no, I mean, uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Mir. I was going to say, it kind of like, I feel like Facebook Messenger is kind of trying to do something similar to that where you can like have the, co- which yeah. makes sense because Meta owns all of it. So, like, of course, they're trying to put their things in different places, but. That that was my only thought. Well, cre- look, I work for Grubhub. I used to work for Waiter. Credit card processing is a highly, 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 highly profitable industry. Um, just just the, that three percent over every transaction. I mean, it's just insane. Um, and usually, when you're doing overseas transactions, you're not doing just ten dollars. You're doing at least a hundred dollars or so. You know. Um, and if a million people do that, that's $3 million. If a million people do that every day is $3 million a day. <laughs> so it's kind of like, you got to just kind of like think about it that way. You know, I mean, that's the other thing is like, you're looking at, you're looking at like demographics, the U S like 60 million people, right? 60 million Hispanics. And if um, 60 million people spend a dollar a day on whatever you're doing every day, like, that's $60 million a day over every day. Like that's just a lot of money that you can literally tap into. This is inspiring me, JP. Let's start something, man. Oh, my wheels, <laughs> my wheels are turning right now. Cause I'm like, wow, like people want to run ads on like meta and TikTok, but it's like, well, if you're trying to reach Hispanic populations, like run them on WhatsApp. Like, I mean, yeah. like go into uh, any like website 
for a business in Latin America and you'll surely see a WhatsApp icon there where you can start chatting with people. It's, well, it's, it, it's crazy. It's very true. We're booking. So, uh, my family and I were going to Honduras and Guatemala for like Thanksgiving, the week before Thanksgiving. So for two weeks and, uh, like we're going to Roatan. So we're booking the resort at Roatan. So like literally I had the WhatsApp number. I called them and that's how we communicated. If I needed to talk to them, I even negotiated, I even haggled them. That's how Latino I am on yeah. WhatsApp. And I was like, I was like, look, I know I'm American in New Orleans, but give me the Honduran rate. Like, and they like, they were laughing and they actually gave me a better rate. Right. So it actually worked. Um, and then we were going to make this like reservation at the restaurant, this local like high end restaurant that I want like that was recommended to me. So like, got their WhatsApp number and then we're texting back and forth and confirmed a reservation. So JP, you're, you're 100% correct. Like it's, it's their go-to um, platform. And maybe that's why what Facebook bought it like what, 10 years ago for a billion dollars. Um, they bought WhatsApp. And, yeah. Um, so they're taking over the world. I know that's one thing that yeah, we're- the rest of the world makes fun of Americans for is our lack of interest in WhatsApp. Um, but I think it's uh, my theory is that Apple just has like such like a hold on Americans with the like iMessage feature that we'll never give it up. But I also think it's a cultural aspect because I mean, even through iMessage, you there are like business profiles and you can do transactions and everything through there. But I think that in the United States, people are more used to like the immediate, um, aspect of internet shopping or inter- doing anything on the internet where you'll go to a store, you'll buy, you don't have to speak with anybody. Um, if you look at uh, businesses in Latin America, they have gotten more sort of advanced technologically, but I think people still have the expectation of maybe having like an intermediary, like speaking with someone and it, it's possible they're just more comfortable doing it that way. Yeah. Also, they, I don't think they're like, like processing platforms are there, right? So like their PayPal's and all that, like there's still, it's, I think there's too many different bureaucracies that they have to deal with to be able to like streamline it over the rest, the remainder of the continent, right? So I, I don't know how to, I, that didn't make, that doesn't make sense. Like the first time I went there, I was 22, 23 and I was like, can we just order it online or something like that? And they're like, no, like, it's not secure kind of kind of thing. I think I don't think the security wasn't there kind of deal back in the day. And I don't know. I, it sounds like it's getting better. Um, but I don't know if it's up to par with like the U.S. kind of like merchant processing, right? Well, JP will let us know Definitely. if his card information ever gets stolen from sending those flowers. <laughs> and that will be the true test of the security. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing is like we have the FDIC here. So like, you know, if there's fraud on your card, JP, like you're just going to get your money back. Whereas like banks over there would be Definitely. like, prove it and be like, well, I don't know how to prove it, you know, kind of deal. So <laughs> that's kind of like, I don't know, all that's so interesting, right? It's, it's very interesting. But I think ultimately, like if you're a company and you're not looking at the Latino demographic as a potential client base, you know, get on it, get on it. You're missing out on dollars. The simple, simple reality. Perfect. I think that wraps up our episode perfectly. So Ernesto, thank you so much for joining us. If someone wanted to reach out to you on social media, where should they do so? Yeah, uh, it's Ernesto Armando on Facebook. And then it's Ernesto Armand Zero on Instagram as well. Um, And I don't have like this like Ernesto Armando.com page or anything. (laughs) Perfect. But, you know, you never know. Maybe in the future. But Ernesto Armando on Facebook. Uh, and I'm in New Orleans. And then Ernesto Armand Zero on Instagram as well. Awesome. And feel free. Yeah, I'm, I'm very easy, accessible. Cool. All right. Awesome. All right. Thank you. I'm. Well, thank you so much. Say your thank you again, JP. I will not talk over you this time. Oh, I'm sorry. Um do, do I have a script? No, for you, this? I, I just wanted you Is to be able to say goodbye. You? Yeah, without me talking over you. Well, thank you so much. Well, thank you so much, Ernesto. We really appreciate all of your insight. Yeah, thank you guys. I, I, I actually enjoy this. This is a lot of fun. It's always fun. 
Let me know when you want me to come back. I'm happy to talk. Thanks for joining us today. Be sure to subscribe and rate the podcast. And if there's anything you'd like to hear us discuss, reach out on Instagram, Facebook, or LinkedIn. And as always, stay optimistic.